Well, hello, and welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all well. Today's video is going to be about this. Come on. The Fujifilm 18-55 f2.8-2.4 lens. Now this lens is considered a kit lens of sorts and it was the first lens that I picked up for the Fujifilm X-T4 which I am filming on today. Sorry, quick coffee break. <sighs> so this lens was the first lens I picked up with my Fujifilm X-T4 and was my first introduction to the Fujifilm system of lenses and cameras and what a great pairing to start off with. It kind of came about because this summer I spent a lot of time traveling with work and I ended up taking this lens with me on a lot of trips a lot of the time as a kind of do it all lens. I fell in love with it again really is the best way to describe it and so I just really wanted to talk about it today. So the first thing I wanted to chat about was the build quality on this lens. So I came to the Fujifilm system from an old Canon DSLR which was really a very beginner focused sort of camera. And when I first picked up this lens out of the box and held it like so, I was like, this is, feels solid. And not solid in a super heavy sense or solid in a, yeah, it's a big hunk of metal, but it just felt like a good premium product. It's metal and plastic construction. The zoom range feels really nice to use. There is no, there's no numbers on the aperture, unfortunately, when it gets to focus. Oh God, I need that. But the aperture ring feels nice. It's a bit looser than other ones, but it feels really good. And overall, the lens, it just feels like a solid piece of kit. Like it doesn't, it never felt when I first picked it up. I was like, this feels as if, it feels like a quality product. I know I've used the word like a million times there, but it feels premium. Compared to what I'd gone from previously, it felt like a massive step up much more professional. While it didn't cost an arm and a leg, it definitely just felt like a really decent piece of kit. I've had this lens for about three years now, and as you can see, it's a bit scratched up. There's a, it's been thrown about. It's not weather sealed, but I've used it in really heavy rain. It's gotten wet, it's gotten sand. It's been out on hikes. It's been out in the cold, the heat. It hasn't failed me once. The build quality with this lens is fantastic for what's considered to be a kit lens, you know? So yeah, that's number one. The build quality straight out of the box was incredible. The second thing, numero dos, the second thing I want to talk about is the versatility you get with this lens. All the way from the wide end of 18 millimeter through to 55 millimeter. There is so much variety and versatility in those focal ranges. You get so many different, very common focal lengths and they're all really sharp. Granted, I think the one caveat, at 18 mil, I find this to be a bit of a softer lens, but also at 18 millimeter, you can get f2.8. So we let in loads of light, which is incredibly versatile for shooting at night. Just getting faster shutter speeds in darker conditions, keeping your ISO down. It's really great. You can get some nice depth of field, out of focus backgrounds with that. And overall, at 18 mil, you stop it down to f, anything past f4. I usually shoot at f8 unless I am looking for those out of focus backgrounds, which you can get. So for a beginner lens, again, that's a massive plus. Yeah, the size. Size matters when it comes to photography. And for me, size matters. No. Yeah. I like when <laughs> my lenses are small. This lens is quite small. Like you can see it here. It's small. I don't like carrying around big pieces of glass that are heavy, that are bulky, that make you stand out from the crowd. I like it when things are a lot smaller. 
and when you're trying to travel or when you're just starting out you don't want something that's too heavy that you're not going to want to pick up and for me that's whether i'm a beginner or now if it's too heavy and it's going to hurt my back or hurt my shoulder or just weigh my bag down i'm not going to take it out and this you oh, drop the lens cap sorry put that back on and with this lens you get so much from quite a small package you really do so i find it's now it was it's never been something I didn't want to pick up. I didn't want to throw in my bag. Whether it's on the camera or just like this, it leaves plenty of room for all your other essentials. Oftentimes don't really need to take anything else with you. It gets a big plus for its small size. Big thumbs up. Big thumbs up. Another feature of this lens which is very much a professional feature and not a beginner thing, is the optical image stabilization. You can see here, it's got the, the OIS on and off switch. So this lens has built into it optical image stabilization, which means that your photos are not gonna be as shaky, so you can have lower shutter speeds, which means you can keep your ISO down, which means your photos can turn out a bit nicer and cleaner. Caveat, if subjects aren't moving. It means for video as well, it's really nice and smooth. As you will hopefully have seen in this day in Dublin, it was a really windy day. So getting a lens that was able to cope with that, it just makes your footage really nice and smooth. And maybe it's more of a video thing for me personally. I typically don't shoot lots of handheld, slow shutter speed stuff. But if you're like me on this day, using the lens for both video and photo, it's great. The X-T4 and lots of Fujifilm's new camera bodies have built-in image stabilization in the camera. So when you pair that with a lens like this, it's quite smooth. It's not a gimbal, but it's pretty smooth handheld footage. And if you're using a Fuji body or a camera body in general that doesn't have image stabilization on, built into it, it's really helpful when the lens does. It just makes everything a bit smoother. And for someone like with really shaky hands like me, it's probably from the coffee, it really helps when your image is a bit smoother and you don't have to worry so much about your shaky hands. So, in conclusion, this lens is a fantastic piece of kit. Whether you are starting out as a beginner or you are someone who's a bit more experienced like me, who knows how their way around cameras a bit more, or even the professional, it's such a great piece of kit to have in your camera bag to carry around. Whether it's your only lens or whether it's a video lens or whether it's one you just take pretty much like me, I kind of exclusively use it now if I'm going traveling and I don't want to pack two or three lenses and I just want one for doing everything. I'll typically reach for this lens. It covers so much. It's great. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I know there's plenty of you out there who A or one still use this lens to have thought about this lens or sold it in the past. And if you sold it in the past, let me know why. And three, if you're thinking about buying this lens, let me know down in the comments. We'll wonder if this has helped. There are other alternatives to the 18 to 55 out now from Fujifilm and from other manufacturers. And if you own any of them and have owned this, let me know what you think. I'd love to hear. Earlier this month, sorry, earlier in the year in summer, I had a trip to Dublin with work and I had the morning off. So I took this lens, the 18 to 55, and this le this camera body, the XT4 out for a little morning walk and stroll to a place called Bull Island, which is in Dublin Bay, all along the coast there. And so I took these two out there for a morning of photography and videoing. So I tried to make a bit of a video out of it and I thought it'd be a really good way to talk about and show examples of why I love this lens so much. In essence, I really like this lens. That's the short of it. But if you want to stick around and see some video and some photos, here we go.
I just got stung by a f by a bee. Oh. I got stung by a bee, like right here, side of my head. A bee or a wasp? I don't know. He buzzed off. Bastard. I actually really like this frame here, and I thought I want to talk about it just a bit because we've got what well, looks like an old visitor center there. It's on the sign. We've got like this nice little windmill here, and there's this old kind of overgrown bench. And I think it kind of tells a nice story. It looks like this visitor center hasn't been used in a while. I like the added sort of third point of the windmill on the left and the bench in the foreground with some nice coloured flowers and foreground elements. And there's a nice little path on the right that leads in like a leading line. Yeah, I just quite like the scene. Let's show you the image now. Kind of coming towards the end of my walk today. Kind of walked all along the beach now to the other end. Kind of head out. There's a lighthouse at the end of here. You can't get to the end of it, but I'm gonna go see how close I can get. Yeah, really happy with some of the images. Literally just here. There's that doorway, which hopefully you've just seen. The birds flying through and the pool of egg chimneys in the background. I actually really love that. Happy with that. Gonna get back to go to work shortly, so I'm gonna go about half an hour here before I start making tracks. And yeah, let's see what we can get towards the end. Hope you've enjoyed this so far, and yeah, it's been a lovely morning. Talk to you in a sec, boys. Oh, look at me with my tote bag. Reusable. Uh, am I in focus? Yeah.
as always thank you so much for watching these videos really appreciate the time you take out of your day to watch them feel free to like subscribe share all that fun stuff i would really appreciate it have a lovely day and i hope to see you again in the future goodbye